27, Shoyo sat at his kitchen table rubbing his temples. He was trying to decide what he regretted most about last night, his words or the wine. It was the wine, definitely the wine, but also, his words, three fingers deep, who talks like that, all that seduction in under a minute business had Shoyo in a twist. Had K actually tried to get him in bed last night? Or was it all just a horrible dream? A misunderstanding maybe, that's it. Shoyo had heard wrong, hadn't he? God, his head hurt, and his stupid phone wouldn't stop ringing. Some number he didn't recognize. It rang again and this time he picked it up. Ready to yell at whoever was trying to sell him something. Yes, he stood up, but his expression fell as he listened. No, that can't be. I just talked to him yesterday. No. Oh God. Shoyo sank back onto the bed. Of course. Yes. I'm on my way. K opened the guest house door and found Shoyo zipping up his suitcase. He threw a hand in the air. Shoyo grabbed his sweater and put it on. Completely ignoring K. He set his suitcase on the floor and looked at his watch. Shit. He whispered. He finally looked up. Revealing puffy. Tear stained eyes. Is my cab here? K softened his tone. Okay, look. We just need to sit down and talk. I have to get to the airport. So, you're going to run away again? Well, this time I'm not going to beg you to come back. Shoyo grabbed his bag and suitcase. Trying like hell to hold back the tears. He didn't have time. That could wait until he was on the plane. He wheeled his carry-on outside and hurried past the pool. K followed him to the side gate. Will you please just talk to me for a second? Let me apologize. I know what I said was inappropriate. I was just so happy and that clouded my judgment. I didn't mean to make you feel cheap. And I certainly didn't mean to assume that you would just jump into my bed. Shoyo tried to punch in the code. But his fingers were too shaky. He stepped aside and leaned against the fence. His breath becoming so shallow he was almost hyperventilating. Please open the gate. K shook his head. No, this is ridiculous. Shoyo, you can't run away. We have to talk. We have to. Shoyo's face contorted, a deep sob making its way up from his chest. He gasped for air. My dad. He completely broke down. K grabbed Shoyo as he fell to the ground. Softening the blow, he took his phone out of his back pocket, hit a button, and held it to his ear, keeping an arm wrapped around Shoyo. Answer. God damn it. Shoyo grabbed Kay's shirt and sobbed into his chest. Damn it Yachi. Answer your phone. She finally answered. Yachi. I need a jet. ASAP. New York. Now Yachi. Kay dropped his phone on the ground and wrapped both arms around Shoyo. I've got you. Just hang on. He heard the cab honk his horn. So he picked his phone back up and punched in the code for the front gate. He kissed Shoyo's head. Stay here. I'll be right back. He ran back into the house and grabbed a 20 from his bag. When he returned a few seconds later, he let the driver know his services wouldn't be necessary. Then he went back to Shoyo and urged him to stand up. Come on, let's go back into the house. I'll get us to the airport. K took a few minutes to pack a bag, insisting that Shoyo sit in his bedroom while he haphazardly pulled clothes from his closet. Whatever he didn't pack he could buy in New York. He wanted to ask questions but thought better of it. Since at the moment, Shoyo wasn't crying. He was sitting there, twisting a tissue between his fingers and staring at the floor. His face paler than Kay had ever seen it before. When they got to the Santa Monica airport, Yachi was there waiting. Two or three, Kay kept his arm wrapped around Shoyo and mouthed the word, three, Yachi nodded and picked up her emergency overnight bag following them onto the plane. Kay was right behind Shoyo as he unlocked the door to his father's Brooklyn apartment. He hadn't died here, that had happened at school. Kay was relieved Shoyo wouldn't have to see any remnants of his death. A chair overturned, or a spilled cup of coffee he'd dropped when the pain hit him. He wouldn't have to look at a certain spot and conjure up memories of where his dad took his last breath. And how painful that last breath must have been. Everything seemed in order. A book sitting on the kitchen table that he'd probably read a few pages of before going off to work. 
A multicolored afghan was folded neatly on the sofa. One made by Daria. K. guessed. The pictures on the walls were all hanging straight and the shoes by the door were evenly spaced. Ben was more like K. It seemed. Then Shoyo. When it came to tidiness, he could appreciate his little world. Warm and inviting. Just like the man himself. Shoyo hadn't stepped very far into the apartment. K stood behind him and removed Shoyo's coat. Then his own. He hung them on a coat rack. Next to Ben's navy blue Yankees windbreaker. When he turned back around. Shoyo had gone into the small galley kitchen. He stood motionless. Staring at the sink. K was about to say something when Shoyo reached out and unplugged the coffee maker and the toaster. There really weren't that many dirty dishes. Certainly not enough to warrant the entire sink being filled with soapy water. That didn't matter. K grabbed a dish towel and stood next to Shoyo. Ready to dry what he'd washed. Only one plate made it into K's hand. But Shoyo wouldn't let it go. He gripped that plate with all of his might as the inevitable tears filled his eyes. K pried his fingers off of the plate and set it down. Shoyo grabbed the edge of the counter and bent over. Resting his forehead on the sink. He was gasping for air as deep. Heavy sobs worked their way up from his chest. His knees buckled and hit the floor. Why? Just. Why? K tried to swallow back his own emotions as he knelt next to Shoyo. He sat on the floor. Leaning against the cupboard. And pulled Shoyo into his arms. K sat on the edge of Ben's bed. Watching Shoyo's every move but also taking in the photos in the room. It was basically a shrine to Shoyo's mother. A beautiful woman with hair just like Shoyo's. He heard a crashing noise. So he ran into the bathroom. The mirror was broken. Shoyo was leaning over the sink. His jaw flexed and his knuckles bleeding. There were several prescription bottles lying in the sink. He didn't tell me. Shoyo ground out. K glanced at the bottles. Ben had a heart issue. And somehow. He thought not telling his son was the best course of action? It didn't make sense after what Shoyo had already been through with his mother's death. Or maybe it did. Now was not the time to judge Ben. He obviously had his reasons. None of which Shoyo would ever understand. K took the bloody, shaking hand in his. He looked at it carefully and set it back down. Where's your dad's first aid kit? Shoyo opened his eyes and looked around trying to figure out where he was. He felt the throbbing in his hand and looked at the bandage. Oh yeah, the mirror I smashed. K was at the door, signing for room service and also giving an autograph. Shoyo rolled over and looked around the hotel suite. He was in a king-sized bed that K had obviously slept in as well. He quickly lifted the sheet to find he'd slept in the nude. Oh good, you're awake. K rolled the table into the room. Shoyo tucked the sheet under his arms and sat up. I'm naked. Did you undress me? K sat on the edge of the bed and felt Shoyo's forehead. You were burning up last night. So I forced you to take a cool shower. I have a doctor coming in half an hour. I don't know if it's just stress or if you're coming down with something again. He took Shoyo's bandaged hand in his. He'll check your hand as well. Shoyo's eyes filled with tears as he recalled the previous evening. Thank you for going to the morgue with me. I couldn't do it alone. K wiped Shoyo's tears away. No one should ever go through that alone. Shoyo set his coffee on the bedside table and leaned back against the headboard. I have to plan his funeral. I have to clean out his apartment. I have to. No. K took Shoyo's hand again. Yachi and I will help with the funeral. And everything else can wait until you're ready. Shoyo covered his eyes. His body started to shake. No matter how hard he tried to hold it together. He couldn't. Because this couldn't possibly be happening to him. Not again. It was too soon. His dad was supposed to grow old and be a grandpa one day. He never pushed Shoyo to have kids. But he knew that was his dream. He would have been good at it too. The best grandpa ever. He would have had a dumb sweatshirt made that said just that. And he would have proudly worn it. Shoyo gasped for air and managed to whisper. He was all I had. That's not true. K pulled at Shoyo's hands. Look at me. Shoyo's hands flopped to his sides. 
but he wouldn't open his eyes. Shoyo, look at me. K cupped his cheeks. You have me. I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. Shoyo finally opened his eyes and blinked back the tears. BFFs. Sho, remember? BFFs. Shoyo didn't feel comforted. Nothing would comfort him right now. And if anything, K's words were making it worse. He didn't need a fucking BFF. He needed his dad. Ben Hanata. His hero. His rock. His eyes flicked around the hotel room. He couldn't remember how they got there. He didn't even remember having a fever last night. Had he eaten anything? No. He couldn't eat. Probably wouldn't ever eat again. Of course. He would eat again. His stomach rolled and his eyes went wide. He pushed K off him in one swift move and ran to the toilet. There wasn't anything left in his stomach. But apparently his body didn't know that. He knelt over the toilet for what felt like hours. Dry heaving and feeling so weak. He draped his arm over the toilet and lay on it. Not giving a shit that it was a toilet. He didn't last long in that position. K wrapped a robe around him and pulled him back into his arms. Shoyo opened his eyes long enough to make sure it was K's slender fingers resting on his chest. Letting him know he wasn't alone. Of course it was K. Who else would it be? Maybe BFFs were okay after all. Shoyo slid his hand under K's and intertwined their fingers. He stared at their joined hands until his eyelids got too heavy to keep open. Shoyo sat by his father's grave, wanting to be alone with him before they lowered him into the ground. K hadn't left Shoyo's side until that very moment. It killed him to do so. But he watched from a distance, giving Shoyo the space he needed. He tucked his hands into his black wool coat and checked the sky again. Rain had been threatening all day. And he prayed the skies wouldn't open up before Shoyo could say his final goodbyes. Yachi walked up and stood next to Kei. How's he doing? He's hanging in there. He was so strong up there. Talking about his dad. I don't think I could do that. Shoyo had barely been able to say a few words at a time without crying. So when he said he wanted to speak at his father's funeral. Kei was concerned. Wondering if he'd be able to get through it without breaking down. I owe it to him, he'd said. K, along with everyone else, watched in awe as Shoyo courageously told his father's life story and also his parents' love story with such love and wit that he had the whole room laughing and crying with him. He's an amazing man. K gave Yachi a sad smile. Don't you think? It was a dumb question. Yachi was quite possibly Shoyo's biggest fan. Yachi turned to him. He's incredible. And I'm so happy you two found each other. It's better than any love story I've ever seen on TV or in the movies. Because it's so real. You know? Kei's smile faded. Yachi didn't know the truth. That it was all a big sham. No one knew. Except Tadashi. He forced a smile. You really think so? Yachi put her arm around her boss. I've never seen you this happy Kei. Ever. And it's so obvious how much you love Shoyo. It's written all over your face every time you look at him. And the way you're taking care of him? We should all be so lucky. K met Yachi's gaze. I do love him. He whispered. Unable to deny it anymore. Tadashi walked up and stood on the other side of K. Resting his hand on his back. We need to get you two back in the limo. What's wrong? K looked around. Wondering if the paparazzi had shown up. It was. After all. Only a few days ago that the photos of them kissing had gone viral. Fake kissing. K corrected himself. Just a few cameras. Just keep them back to Dashi. He needs time alone with him. I'll try. What would you like me to do about Shoyo's ex? Yachi glanced behind him. That's Shoyo's ex? He's gorgeous. She quickly tried to make up for her outburst by leaning in and whispering. Not more than you. Of course. She glanced behind her again. Oh god. He's coming this way. K didn't turn around. Thank you. Yachi. Will you make sure my mother gets home okay? He folded his arms. Stealing himself for whatever came next. I'll handle the ex Tadashi. Yachi and Tadashi walked away. Passing Tobio as they went. K Tsukishima. In the flesh. My life is now complete. You must be Tobio. Tobio Kagayama. He offered his hand. K 
Kay looked at the hand and reluctantly took it. Kay had been expecting this. He assumed Tobio would attend the funeral. And Shoyo had described him perfectly. He took in the dark almond eyes. And black hair before he pulled his eyes away from Tobio and turned back to Shoyo. Tobio stood as close as possible and folded his arms. Mimicking Kay's stance. It's so sad that he's gone. He was like a second father to me. Did you have a chance to meet him? Yes. I did. Tobio gave Kay a sideways glance. You're even more handsome in person. Kay kept his eyes on Shoyo. Why are you being so polite? Surely you're upset that Shoyo and I are dating. Yes. Well, what you don't know is that I will always own Shoyo's heart. And even though we've both had our little flings, our destinies will realign. And my prince, my future husband and the father of our children, will come home. Of this you can be sure. Kay turned and gave the man his best glare. You know, you can say that all you want. But it's still just horseshit. I know what you did to Shoyo's heart. Tobio gave him a closed lip smile. I'd like to pay my respects now. And also my parents are here. It's time they met my future husband. Kay got in front of Tobio. Blocking his way. That's not a good idea. This isn't the place. Tobio glanced over at two people standing by a limousine and waved them forward. They would also like to meet their favorite TV star. Maybe get an autograph? Kay's jaw flexed as he tried to control his anger. He wanted to rip this man apart with his bare hands. Or at the very least have the security guards Tadashi had hired drag him away. But that wouldn't help Shoyo. You do understand that Shoyo is experiencing unimaginable grief right now. And your request for an autograph is both callous and wildly inappropriate. And the gall you have to expect Shoyo to be polite to two people who refused to even acknowledge his existence, and on the day of his own father's funeral is so far beyond the pale. I'm struggling to believe you have even one caring bone in your body. Tobio smiled again, seeming way too calm by Kay's estimation. Be nice to my parents. I'd hate for them to feel unwelcome at my fiancé's father's funeral. Tobio's parents spoke quietly behind him. He put on a fake smile and turned around. He could at least keep them at bay. Kay wanted to grab the man walking away from him. Fiancé? What the hell? Is this man totally batshit? Kay watched helplessly as Tobio walked toward Shoyo. Shit. He whispered when he heard Tobio's parents speaking quietly behind him. He put on a fake smile and turned around. He could at least keep them at bay. After posing for several photos and signing an autograph. And somehow convincing Tobio's parents to get back in their car. Kay went back to his own limo. Tell me when they're gone. He said to Tadashi as he opened the car door. He took one more look at Tobio and Shoyo before he got in and laid his head back against the seat and closed his eyes. I can't compete with that. He whispered to himself. No, I don't suppose you can. I learned that the hard way with your father. No matter how hard I tried. I could never be 25 again. Kay opened his eyes and found his mother sitting across from him in the stretch limo. I didn't know you were still here. Just then, Yachi got in the limo. She gave her boss an apologetic grimace. Mrs. Tsukishima, are you sure you don't want the driver to take you home? Margaret waved her off. Shush. Yachi, I'm talking to my son. Now, who is he Kay? Kay took a deep breath. Shoyo's ex-boyfriend. Margaret looked to Yachi for answers. But Yachi just shrugged. Well... How nice of you to give them room to cuddle. Kay rested his elbow on the door and rubbed his forehead. Ignoring his mother, Margaret leaned forward. Maybe you should tell me why you would let an ex-boyfriend who looks like that anywhere near Shoyo. What the hell are you thinking? Yachi's eyes widened as she nodded in agreement. Well, for one thing, I don't own him. Kay snapped back. Margaret scooted forward and grabbed her son's hand. But you can own this moment. And that may sound dramatic. But you always liked a little drama in your life. So go take care of Shoyo and put that little home wrecker in his place. Home wrecker? Kay had a feeling his mother wasn't referring to Tobio so much as expressing her feelings about the woman that stole her husband. Kay didn't move. It wasn't his place. No matter what everyone around him thought. Yachi. 
Talk some sense into my son. Um. Yachi cleared her throat. He's the best thing that ever happened to you. Kay smirked. Yes. I know you two are his squealing fangirls. But you don't understand. You think we're saying this because of his incredible career? Margaret scoffed. My darling son. We're saying this because of who you are when you're with him. If you can't see how happy he makes you. And how great you are together. Then you're blind. He makes me crazy. Kay muttered. The best kind of crazy. Yachi gently replied. Margaret narrowed her eyes at her son. Yachi. Give me a moment alone with Kay. Please. She waited until Yachi was out of the car and then said. What's going on? Nothing. Then go take care of your boyfriend. His father is about to be lowered into the ground and you're going to let some other man. It's not real, okay? Kay blurted out. We're not real. Margaret straightened her shoulders. I don't understand. I know you don't mom. It was Tadashi's idea, but it's over now. Shoyo has done his part. Stop talking in riddles K. Our relationship okay? I paid him to be my boyfriend to make the coming out process easier. Margaret sat back in her seat. Stunned by the declaration. You paid him for. Not that. Not sex. Well, that's a relief. And that's why I have no right to go over there and claim him as my own. He's not mine. He never was. I disagree. Have you seen the way he looks at you? And unless my eyes have failed me. I believe it was your hand he held through the entire funeral. He doesn't have anyone else. Apparently. He does. Margaret forcefully pointed out the window. But he chose you today. The worst day of his life and he chose you Kay. Now. Get out there. Because the worst day of his life isn't over yet. And if you don't. I will. Kay considered it for a moment. His eyes filling with tears. Do you love him? Honey? Kay didn't answer. But he did put his hand on the door handle. If you love him. It doesn't really matter how this thing between the two of you started. All the best love stories are complicated. Kay pulled the handle but didn't open the door. This sham. This charade. How does it end? We break up in a few months. And then? Then I start dating for real. Find someone. Kay took his hand off the handle. We have a plan. Tadashi has a plan. We need to stick to it. I see. Margaret smoothed her charcoal gray coat over her dress as she considered what she was hearing. And you just forget about Shoyo? No. Kay shook his head. Never. He took care of me. He's become my best friend. Margaret pulled her phone out of her purse. I'm sorry my darling, but I don't buy it. These are not the words of someone who is just a friend. Kay put up his hand. I know mom. I know he texted you. But he was just saying what he had to say to keep up the charade. Really? Margaret said with a doubtful tone. She put her reading glasses on. Shoyo, I'm so very sorry to hear about your father. I'm getting on the first plane out. See you soon my darling. And this was his reply. Thank you, Mrs. Tsukishima. I feel so lost right now. K is the only reason I'm still standing. That doesn't mean. K shook his head. Margaret gave her son a stern look. Let me finish. She scrolled down a bit. K is a strong man. Shoyo. He gets that from me. Whether he'll admit it or not. If you let him. He'll shine bright like a star in your time of need. He'll prop you up until you can stand on your own again. And I'll be there for you too. You're a part of us now. And the Tsukishima family will not let you down. You really believe that? Margaret took off her glasses. I may not say it enough. No. That's not right. I haven't said it enough. But honestly. You haven't made it easy. You've kept everyone at arm's length for years. Including me. But Shoyo has opened you up again. And yes. I can now see all of you in all of your glory and it's a beautiful sight. Now. Do you want to hear what his reply was? K nodded. His grief was making him ramble. But I just heard him out. Before I met K. I thought I knew what love was. It's funny how wrong we can be about our own lives. I wish you could have met my dad. He would have liked you and your honesty. I haven't been so honest lately. He would have been disappointed in me for that. Now. He doesn't have to know. And that's okay. He's with my mom now and that's the most important thing because he loved her so much. Life tears us to pieces sometimes doesn't it? 
I hope we'll see more of you. Family is so important. Margaret met Kay's gaze. Now I know what the dishonesty was about. He felt guilty that he'd lied to his father about his relationship with you. Kay took a tissue out of his pocket and wiped his nose. He hasn't really said much at all to me since his dad died. Only the things he's had to say. Details about the funeral. Practical stuff. He's devastated. Honey. His thoughts. His feelings. They're all over the place. That text was a jumble of emotions. But one thing is clear. He sees you as his family. Now, am I going out there or are you? Margaret tucked her phone back in her purse and waited. Kay put his hand on the door handle again. This time he hesitated for only a few seconds before he opened the door and got out of the car. Margaret smiled in satisfaction. Now that's my son.